Hello friends, welcome back. I'm very very sorry if you can hear like karaoke at the background because um my neighbors just bought karaoke and they're just trying it out. And for some reason they they're still playing it. So yeah, um I'm not going to read any comments cuz this video may actually be a long one and we're coming back to episode what episode was it? Episode Six of the Pacific War series by Kings and Generals, and I'm just gonna, before we start, I'm just gonna start my recording. Okay, so it's still zero, and um, okay, so Battle of Kampar. Okay, the Battle of Kampar, 30 December 1941 to 2 January 1942 was an engagement of the Malayan campaign during World War II involving British and Indian troops from the 11th Indian Infantry Division and the Japanese 5th Division. On the 27th December, in an effort to prevent the capture of RAF Kuala Lumpur, Lumpur I'm sorry, the 11th Indian Infantry Division occupied Kampar which offered a strong natural defense position in doing so, they were also tasked with delaying the advancing Japanese troops long enough to allow the 9th Indian Infantry Division to withdraw from the East Coast. The Japanese intended to capture Kampar as a New Year's gift to Emperor Hirohito, and on 30 December, the Japanese began surrounding the British and Indian positions. The following day, fighting com commenced. The Allied forces were able to hold on for four days before withdrawing on 2 January 1942, having achieved their objective of slowing the Japanese advance. Okay, so it's actually a a gift for Emperor Hirohito. And I know the last episode was actually almost like four or five or maybe a month ago because um, we started a World War One series. And if you want to see that series go check it out it's going to be like a pop-up here or a link down below so subscribe to kings and generals my favorite history channel uh, of all time okay let's go oh yeah by the way i'm going to read comments maybe in the next video it's been a while i'm kind of rusty yeah, it's been a while. I'm kind of rusty. Um, we've been reacting to to Epic History TV's World War One series, so it's been a while. In the previous week, we covered the fall of two of the first places the Japanese had attacked: Hong Kong and Wake Island. And we also watched General MacArthur's forces start their catastrophic withdrawal into Bataan where they would resist until reinforcements could arrive to save them. In Malaya, the British defenders were also in a difficult position, nearly thrown off the center of the peninsula. Today, we're going to continue our coverage over the events unfolding in the Malay Peninsula and in the Philippines. But first, we're going to take a quick detour to China, where major combat resumed for the first time since the attack on Pearl Harbor. 2020. Okay, so if you... If you didn't know, episode two, they talked about um, the invasion of Malaya. So now we're coming back to continue that in episode six. There, um, Kings and Generals gonna continue the events that is happening in the Philippines and just a few fighting in China. What's this? Okay. Wasn't an easy year for all of us, so we at Kings and Generals appreciate the fact that Magellan TV support. Okay, so it's an ad. Oops, sorry. I'm going to skip the ad and over here. <clears throat> the outbreak of the Pacific December 28th, War. But it's December 30. Hmm, I don't know why. Did not alter the main objective of the Japanese operations against China. That's which was the overthrow of Chiang Kai-shek's regime and the establishment of a puppet Chinese government. Most of the Japanese forces had been allocated to China since 1938, but the opening of a new front to the south 
meant that some divisions would have to be transferred to partake in the offensives launched in the Pacific, although the Japanese position in the region would remain strong enough to continue the occupation of most of the strategic locations that had been conquered. Tokyo also hoped that the capture of Hong Kong, Burma, and any other means for the Allies to supply China would eventually force Chiang Kai-shek to surrender. But in the first weeks of the war, in a yeah, because the Burma Road was actually open, so that the Allies can send supplies to to China. Okay. Accordance with orders from the Allies, Chinese forces resumed vigorous guerrilla warfare in against the invaders. Although the Japanese would quickly take the upper hand and beat them off. The failures of the National Revolutionary Army during these first few weeks of the war left Chiang Kai-shek unwilling to start any new major operations during the start of the year 1942. The Japanese, focused on their southern expansion through the Pacific, were also cautious about embarking on offensives against the fierce and numerous Chinese defenders. And yet there would be one exception. Back on December 13th, Lieutenant General Anami Korichika of the 11th Army had ordered his forces to prepare for a sortie south of the Yangtze River. After moving his forces south of Yoyang, the 6th and 40th Divisions began their advance at dusk, driving the Chinese defenders towards Quanwangqiao and then expelling them from the town. The following day, Anami sent the 3rd Division to travel along the Guangzhou Hankou Railway then crossing the Kushui near Kuei and easily routing the 99th Army. General Shu Yu of the 9th War Area quickly reacted by moving two armies to the left bank of the Kushui, but by December 29th, all Japanese divisions had crossed the river and had started offensives against the Chinese defenders. At this point, oh Anami recognized that the Changsha area was inadequately defended, so he decided to commit to a full-on attack to capture the city. The next day, the Japanese divisions broke through the enemy lines one by one, routing the 37th Army and then continuing their drive towards Changsha. Mm. While the 3rd and 6th Divisions were ordered to directly continue against their objective, Anami ordered the 40th to take the town of Mafengcui to the southeast before capturing Qinqing, another important city. By December okay. 3rd. Okay, so if you're wondering where. Where is the chat? Where, where is the communists? Um, I forgot what episode was that. It was maybe episode three or four. Um, there, there was something like an ambush happened from the nationalists. That they, um, I forgot what division or what army was that. Um, they ambushed their own like ally because before, before. There's like the second united front where the communists and the nationalists help each other fight off um, the Japanese. But a lot of um, a lot of things happen, a lot of events, and um, there was one point like he, he kings in general talk about it. Um, the national some national I don't know if it's a division or an army. Um, they ambushed. A retreating communist communist army. Um, when when uh, Mao Zedong heard about this, it was the end of the Second United Front, and they refused to help um, the nationalists against the Japanese. Thirty-first, the sixth had taken the town of Langli Shi, and the third was already on the outskirts of Changsha. Japanese troops then started their attack on the city managing to infiltrate the city's castle, but facing fierce Chinese resistance in the form of the 10th Army. Meanwhile, the 40th Division reached Qinqing on January 1st, starting its attack on the city one day later. The remnants of the 37th Army were easily beaten off, and by January 2nd, Qinqing had fallen into Japanese hands. At the same time, the 6th Division joined the 3rd in its assault against Changsha, slowly but surely overcoming the Chinese defenders. By January 4th, the city had fallen to the Japanese, and the main objective of Anami's operation had been achieved. But Xu Yu was now reuniting his forces for a general counterattack, and he was not going to let the enemy take his city so easily. For the Chinese counteroffensive, we'll have to wait until next week. 
because first we need to return to the Pacific to take a look at the operations happening in Malaya and the Philippines. On December 28th, the situation was desperate for the Americans under General MacArthur, forced to execute a difficult withdrawal into Bataan that required a great deal of coordination between the North and South Luzon forces. In the North, Japanese pressure had forced General Wainwright's forces to abandon their second line and to retreat to a new defensive line between the towns of San Miguel and Cabanatuan. And in the South, the Japanese 16th Division had reached the Los Banos Line, facing staunch American resistance to continue their drive on Manila. The following day, the Japanese had already gotten to the towns of Tarlac and Bongabon, so they were now applying heavy pressure on Wainwright's new line with their tanks and superior firepower. At this point, General Homa also realized the extent of MacArthur's plan so he sent the 7th Tank Regiment as a vanguard to move fast and capture any bridges and road junctions that would allow them to entrap the retreating defenders. Wow, me react, me learning about this? I am starting to learn the Philippines is, is a, um, hard to defend um, because the Philippines is filled with a lot of islands and imagine defending a country filled with islands you have to put like the um, armies or divisions in every single island but there's some islands that is filled with volcanoes and and um, the natural disasters that is happening in the Philippines here in, the, in my in my country it's pretty devastating because I'm kind of curious what were their reactions to to the to the natural disasters that happened i don't know if there's there was a natural disaster happened in the middle of like the japanese invasion but it's just i'm just curious among the seventh targets were the vital road junction of claridel and the steel bridges of calumpit where the south luzon force needed to pass to get to Bataan. Meanwhile in Malaya, the Japanese 5th Division had crossed the Perek River by December 26, later joined by the 4th Guards Regiment, which had taken part in the invasion of Thailand. They would then continue to press the British rearguard in the next few days, preparing for a general offensive against Kampa. Back on December 24th, General Murray Leon was sacked due to his incompetence and was replaced by Brigadier Archibald Paris as commander of the 11th Indian Division. By December 29th, the 11th had established defensive positions around Kampar, which was a key point for the defense of central Malaya. Now it's going to be the start of the Indian Division, 11th Indian Division um, to try to slow down the Japanese advance in British Malaya. Okay as it was not easily outflanked in land. Paris then deployed the 15th Brigade north of Kampa, with the 28th Brigade covering the trunk road from Dipang around the eastern side of the Bujang Malacca, and with the 12th Brigade at Bidor to cover possible Japanese outflanking attempts via the Perak River. In turn... Oh, what was that? Oh, it's an ad. Okay, what is this? Uh, okay. Oops. Yamashita planned to capture Kampa in three thrusts. A first direct attack on Kampa by the 41st Regiment, a second encircling movement to the west by the 42nd Regiment, aimed against the 11th Indian Division's left flank, and a third outflanking landing at the mouth of the Burnham River by the 11th Regiment that would cut the British line of communications. On December 30th, the 55th Regiment had also landed at Kotabaru and then started to advance down the coast behind the 56th Regiment to launch a joint attack on Kwantan. In the first two days of the Kampar operation, the Japanese troops would move slowly to their designated objectives trying to strike at the British defenders with a surprise attack powerful enough to knock them out of the battle. Furthermore, 
The 42nd got itself stalled by swamps and spent three days in a difficult march that prevented them from participating in the offensive. Oh, okay. At the swamps. same time this was happening, Homer's forces finally managed to break through Wainwright's oh, third line yeah. when they took the town of San Miguel. The American defenders would then be forced to retreat to their last line, ranging from Fort Stotzenberg to the Sibyl Springs. Concurrently, the 7th Tank Regiment was also traveling towards Gapan, a short distance away from the last American line. By December 31st, the 7th had broken through this last line, getting itself in the vicinity of Baliwag, a town that stood on the way to Plaridel. To, to be honest with you, there was mistakes and a lot of incompetence that happened in, in the defense of the Philippines. It's, you know, um, the lack of supply, the lack of equipment, it's just hard. Other forces were also rapidly pushing the American defenders to the town of San Fernando, where Wainwright knew that he needed to make a final stand. Back in Malaya, following a heavy artillery barrage, the 41st Regiment started its attack down the trunk road. British resistance was fierce, yet they barely managed to repel the enemy assault, although artillery of the 15th Brigade did inflict many losses on the Japanese regiment. At this point, a small convoy of boats of the 11th Regiment had also already passed off Pankor Island, arriving at the mouth of the Burnham River during the evening of January 1st. They would then land at Utan Melitang, driving off a small British patrol there and securing possession of this vital crossroad. This was very bad for the Malayan defenders, posing a huge threat to their line of communications. In response, Paris moved one battalion of the 28th Brigade to the Slim River, where he began to build a secondary defensive line. Yet this left Percival concerned for the safety of Kwantan Airfield, which he needed to hold at least until January 10th to be able to receive reinforcements, as the fall of the airfield would give Japanese fighters the chance to jeopardize their arrival. In defense of Kwantan was the 22nd Brigade, and Percival urged them to at least hold the airfield until January 6th, something that seemed nearly impossible. At the same time, the 7th Tank Regiment finally took the town of Baliwag and then advanced to engage M3 Stuart light tanks at Claridel. In this tank battle, the M3s, supported by artillery of the 71st Division, managed to push the Hagos back. Concurrently, the South Luzon force of General Jones had reached the Kalumpit steel bridges. While his troops crossed it, Jones also sent two tank platoons to engage the Japanese tanks at Baluag and thus create enough time for the Americans to pull out. The American armor would engage the 7th in the afternoon, disrupting the Japanese force and successfully delaying their advance. By the end of the day, the last of the South Luzon force moved past Columpit, blowing up the twin they're bridges now, behind them. So the Okay, now they're, they're now being surrounded by Japanese forces. This is bad. Um, wow like geez look at this there's like islands here islands there it's hard to defend it the on um, the mainland of the philippines like um luzon and um, mindanao has the most land area in visayas that visayas the middle of the philippines is actually just fill, filled with um islands uh, are there some land map land mass but it's just filled with downs and and besides you can see a lot of volcanoes and the place where i live in there's a famous volcano here and um there was a famous volcano eruption here that happened 16th division couldn't follow them the next day units of the 16th occupied manila with homa moving his headquarters to the philippines capital other units of the 16th were also already crossing the Pampanga River at Columpit, while the 48th Division was concentrating around San Fernando, where the 11th and 21st Divisions made a last stand in front of the entrance to Bataan. Homa launched costly attack after attack against the battered divisions, 
but the Filipino forces would hold their ground until January 4th, then starting to withdraw towards Layak, where they formed a new defensive line. January 2nd would also see the end of the Battle of Kampar, although it wouldn't have the same outcome as the successful American withdrawal. At daybreak, the 41st again started an attack against the 15th Brigade, suffering heavy losses while overrunning a British platoon. Yet the British defenders organized a strong counterattack that at first was met by heavy machine gun fire, but eventually managed to drive the Japanese off. Despite the heroic resistance of the 15th Brigade, to the west, the 4th Guards Regiment landed at Telekansen and engaged the battered 12th Brigade by mid-afternoon. Heavy fighting ensued, but the Japanese threat of encirclement was enough for Paris to order a withdrawal to the Slim River. At Kwantan, the two Japanese regiments had also crossed the river and were now heading towards the airfield. The 22nd Brigade was preparing for a difficult confrontation, but when the news of Paris's retreat reached them, the entire 11th Indian Division of General Basto was forced to withdraw through the Kuala Lipistarantut Rao barrier. The 22nd immediately proceeded to demolish all buildings and installations in Kuantan before starting their retreat, but at night their rearguard would be caught in the midst of a Japanese attack. The Indians were demolished in the assault, losing a third of the brigade's strength, but the rest of the 22nd managed to retreat without further incident by January 3rd. That same day, the 4th Guards Regiment advanced up to the Salangor River and then turned in land towards the bridges at Batang Bajuntai, thus threatening the key city of Kuala Selangor and its valuable airfield. At the same time, General Percival received his first reinforcements at Singapore, the 45th Brigade, immediately sending them to repel the enemy advance on Selangor. But would it succeed? And would Paris's new defensive line hold the Japanese invaders? For these answers, join us next week as we cover the Battle of the Slim River and the continuation of the advance down the Malay Peninsula. If you want to get the weekly coverage of the Pacific War, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to get notified of our videos. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our video... Okay, so that's the end of our video, wow. Remember Battle of Kampar is actually, is actually just a, um, it's not really the battle, it's not really the gift. Um, the gift there if, is the, the land, um, if they won, won and took, took over like Kampar, that's a, a um, New Year's gift for Emperor Hirohito. So, that was amazing. Wait, what? Oh, it's okay. Uh, that was amazing, guys. And I'm sorry if my background, if you can hear like karaoke, I'm very, very sorry. But anyway, this is just, this is like the shortest um, Kings and General specific wars video that I've re recorded. Wow, 23 minutes. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Next video might actually be about like World War One, And I, the reason why I reacted to Pacific War is we have to finish this and I love the Pacific War and I love learning about it so thank you for watching like and subscribe comment down below anything that you know about this this uh, this battle goodbye